time once again. Good evening, everybody. This is Pastor Leroy Carter, and I want to welcome you all to the Back to Basics Bible Study. And uh, we've, we've got a lot of people coming online with us tonight. We give a shout-out to each and every one of you. And uh, our friends up in uh, Pennsylvania, we look at Marie Smith. Hey, Marie Smith. I see um, Roger Pond is on. Uh, his daddy is on. And uh, we're looking at Gene Bratton up in Wilmington, Delaware. We're looking at Dustina down in Tennessee, our friend Dustina. We're looking at uh, Minister Loretta Jackson in Wilmington, Delaware. Praise God. Brian Whitaker up in uh, Ohio. Hey, Brian, I see Roger Pond Jr. is on with us. So, And more will be coming on as we continue tonight. Praise God. This is a blessing. It is such a blessing to see you all. We are recording, and so we want to ask you all to mute your phones, mute your phones, and when to mute your phone is press star six, star six. Then uh, at times, sometimes we ask you to come on and unmute your phone and make comments, and Jackie Carter, when she comes down uh, from upstairs, She'll be monitoring, along with Dr. Jean Bratton, the chat window. I appreciate uh, Jackie Carter and Dr. Jean Bratton and um, their assistance in this ministry. And I praise God for them. They are so important to this ministry, and so are you. Don't underestimate yourself. You're important to us, too. It is a joy and an honor and a pleasure uh, to uh, minister the Word of God to you. Also, um, this, these uh, teachings will be recorded where we will be sending these teachings throughout the world. Many of our students in other countries, um, we have students in South Africa, we have students in, in Kenya, we've got students in um, the Caribbean, we have stu students in some countries in Europe, and so it is our pleasure and a joy to be able to share with you the Word of God. Praise God. And so uh, for the next 12 weeks, we teach the Bible in 12-week segments. And we want to offer to any of you who desires to, to study with us, and you'll get three credits from this study, and we will not charge you anything for this, for this course. Normally, our courses run... $200 per course, but for this semester, we're offering this course for free to anyone. All you have to do is attend the classes and do the homework. Well, the homework is um, a weekly assignment, and so if you don't have your assignments, make sure you contact me after the class or tomorrow or sometime shortly thereafter. I will send you the assignments and then ask you to complete the assignments. This way you will get credit for the course. So we're looking forward to 12 weeks of exciting uh, learning from the Bible. I love teaching the Word of God. Actually, the Holy Spirit is the teacher. I'm just the pipe that he blows through. And so we praise God for what he's doing, and we want to give him all the glory and the honor. And if our friend Dustina um, Branham is on, then we'd like to have Dustina to lead us in prayer tonight. Hello, Pastor. Hello, Church. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we come before your throne, Lord, and we ask you, Lord, to be with us tonight as we journey through this next semester, Father. Lord, I pray that you just be with us. Give us the wisdom and understanding as we need, Father, as we go through this. Lord, I pray that you be with Pastor Carter. Help him, Father, as he ministers to us, Lord, and teaches us, Father, and use him as your vessel. Lord, I pray for all... All those who are online tonight, Father, I pray that you be with us through our comings and our goings, Lord, and just be with us. Give us strength. Give us guidance. Please send the Holy Spirit to be with us as well. 
Lord, we give you all the glory and praise, and we thank you for Pastor Carter showing his grace and to offer us this semester through these trying times that we're in right now, Lord. And we just give you all the glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Dustina. And please give our love to Michael and, and your children. And you all keep on keeping on. We love you. And uh, you, you're such an encouragement to us and to many other people. So God bless you. God, God bless you. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Dustina um, is one of the best cooks in the world. She's always putting a, a recipe or a dish on Facebook. But Dustina, let me tell you something about Jackie Carter. Jackie Carter got something cooking upstairs right now. She'll be with us in a moment, but she's got this house stinking, man. It's stinking with something good, and I can't wait until after this uh, course of class is over because she's got the house stinking up for, upstairs, Amen. and it's smelling good, and my stomach is, turn, is, is growling. So, Dustina, you, you two must be getting together sharing your recipes because um, I see what you put on Facebook. And Jackie, she's 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 burning something up there, so we're we'll be ready. But uh, God, God is also preparing us and, and giving us something good. He prepares good meals for us every Wednesday night, and so we thank God. I want to thank God for you all that you're taking the time out to study God's word. I hear a lot of people saying, "I want to get closer to God," and especially during this coronavirus. People said, oh, i got to get closer to God. And, and so I've been sending messages out to them through Twitter, through email, and Facebook. I'm saying, hey, if you really want to get closer to God, study the Word of God. That's the best way to get closer to God. Study His Word. Study what He says. By studying the Word of God, we get to know God's heart, what's in His heart. And uh, every word of God is pure, the Bible says. So it's profitable for us to study. So if you re really want to draw near to God, study his word. Now, I'm going to tell you, the next 12 weeks will be challenging. Uh, studying the Bible in, in our school of ministry is not a piece of cake. It's not a cakewalk. We require homework. There are weekly assignments. And so as I teach each week, then... We take the assignments. Your job is to read the passages. Read. We want you to read uh, the passages. Read as much of the Bible as you can. And so we take our teachings on Wednesday night. Then you have a whole week following to read the passages, answer the questions, submit the questions um, by email or an attachment, and then get ready for the next assignment. Now, some of you are are professionals at this, you know how to do it, you study ahead of time, you get a jump. And so that's good too. But we want you to study the Word of God. And please do not take a shortcut. Now I know there are some who try to take a shortcut and, you, and some of you learn how to search for the questions in the scriptures or Google the questions and get the answers. But that's, that's not the way we want to run, operate our school. The purpose is to get people to study the Bible, the Word of God, read this Word of God. And so now that many of us are, as Roger Pond Sr. says, we're on house arrest, we're on lockdown, we have more time to study the Word of God and read the Word of God. So let's make these next 12 weeks from tonight until July 22nd an exciting, life-changing time where we draw closer to God as we look at the books of the Bible that are important as we look at First Chronicles, Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther, and how these books close out Old Testament history. When we finish the book of Esther, uh, we will have completed studying Old Testament history. Now, I know that in the Old Testament, following Esther, are the books of Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon. Then you have your major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel. Then you have your minor prophets, 
Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. But these books that follow, all the books that follow the book of Esther, are uh, um, all of them are included included in Old Testament history. So when we begin, we began Old Testament history with the book of 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel, and actually going back to Genesis and Exodus, Leviticus, and the uh, Exodus from Egypt and all that. Old Testament history ends, ladies and gentlemen, when we conclude, actually when we conclude the book of Nehemiah. When Nehemiah builds the temple and they have a revival in, in Israel, then Old Testament history ends. Nehemiah's book is written around about the year 430 B.C. After that, no other historical books were written that were accepted in the Bible. That is why with this course, we will add the study of the books called the Apocrypha. We'll be, we'll be looking at the, the Apocrypha and the Pseudepigrapha. These are books that were written, many of them, and many of them contain history, but many of them also contain, contain fantasy and, 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 and untruths. So we want to take a look at that so that when you hear your friends, the Masonics, the Masons, and the Order of the Eastern Star and certain other people saying, well, I have copies of the hidden books of the Bible, and I know more about what's in the Bible. No, they don't. They're looking at books that were not accepted in the biblical canon uh, by, the, by the priest. The Holy Ghost did not give the, the bishops and the priests the, the approval of these writings. So we're going to go on a very important journey, ladies and gentlemen, uh, from First Chronicles through Esther, and actually, when we finish the book of Nehemiah, we have finished Old Testament history. You may say, well, what about uh, Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel and all that? Well, all of, that, all of those people lived during the period between uh, the time of the, of, of the Exodus and the time of Nehemiah. And so we're going to put this whole historical thing together and uh, the Psalms and, and Proverbs and uh, all those writings and the writings of the Old Testament um, prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, all their writings, their lives took place before the time of Nehemiah. Nehemiah lives after uh, Daniel and Ezekiel and Isaiah and Jeremiah. And then when we look at the Old Testament uh, the minor prophets, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, all of them lived before Nehemiah. So I want you to get a good mental picture of the Old Testament history. When we finish in this course the book of Nehemiah, and we'll, we'll be finishing that around mid-June or the latter part of June, when we finish studying Nehemiah, we will have completed a study of Old Testament history. After Nehemiah, there are no writings, no biblical writings that were accepted or canonized, and, 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 and no writings to show us what happened to the Jewish people after Nehemiah uh, built the walls of Jerusalem, and they celebrated, and Ezra read uh, the, the, the scrolls of the Old Testament books that were discovered, and a great revival took place. And so from 430 B.C. until the time of John the Baptist, about 400 years, we do not hear from God. Uh, we do not hear from God uh, for that 400-year uh, history. Okay, uh, Jackie Carter says someone needs to mute. Okay, I have that someone. Uh, make sure that uh, if you're coming on, some of you are on for the first time, and we welcome you. 
And so what we'd like you to do is to mute your phone that's pressing star six so that nobody uh, nobody is um, bothered by what's going on in the background. Okay. It's probably got it's some wild things Mute your phones, everybody. Okay, thank you, thank you. Don't be offended, just mute your phone. This way, uh, for people who are studying who cannot come on live with us, we've got many students who cannot be on live, but they will take the recording starting tomorrow and review the lesson and then prepare their homework assignment. So we're about a great work. Back to Basics Ministries is uh, touching a lot of people, and we thank God. We just praise God for what he is doing. Okay, okay. So I think I clarified this whole thing about Old Testament history. And um, when Old Testament history ends with the right with the book of Nehemiah, then we're going to study the book of Esther, even though, check this out, Esther lived before Nehemiah. Okay? Um, the king who released Nehemiah to come back to Jerusalem, released Nehemiah to take the third wave of exiles out of Babylon back to Jerusalem. So the king who was on the throne at that time uh, was probably the, the, the grandson of Esther, the grandson of Esther. So we look at that as we go along. We want to welcome Elder Lucy, Lucia Williams, and Lucia and, and her husband Cliff. They're on board with us. And Sam, Pastor Sam Gale and everybody, we'll talk with you all. We'll chat and chew uh, at the end of our presentation. And so we thank God for uh, Dustina for leading us in prayer. And once again, Jackie Carter and, and, and Dr. Jean Bratton will be in the chat room, and uh, I guess pretty soon we'll be calling Jackie Carter, Dr. Jackie Carter, although she prefers to be called Jackie, okay? She's studying with us for her doctor, doctoral degree. Praise God. So remember, this, is, uh, this course is free for everybody, so tell your friends. Tell them, hey, come on, study the Word with us. We're getting into the Bible. We're getting closer to God. Then also tell them, hey, you know what? You can get three credits toward a, a, a degree with Back to Basics School of Ministry by studying in this course. And it's, it's free. This semester is free. Praise God, because we call this the uh, uh, Back to Basics coronavirus incentive uh, stimulus thing, the stimulus so that we save you some money. It's free. Praise God. We start charging it again in September. Okay, a uh, background on, on uh, First Chronicles. First Chronicles. First, and Chron First Chronicles and Second Chronicles were written as one book. We believe that the author of the book of First Chronicles and Second Chronicles, the books, was Ezra. Ezra, okay? And um, we also believe that the timing of the writing of this book was between 425 and 400 B.C. That means before Christ. <clears throat> and at this time, the exiles had returned from Babylon. Now, when I use the term exiles, I mean Israel was led into captivity because of their sins. Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar, destroyed Israel and carried away thousands of Israelites into captivity. They killed and slaughtered a lot also. Why did this happen? Why would God let his people be slaughtered like this? The answer is simply this. They sinned. They refused to acknowledge God. They refused to obey God. They, they did whatever they wanted to do. Ladies and gentlemen, you may say, wow, that sounds like America. It sure does. And that is why we need to study the word of God so that we do not make the mistakes that the Israelites did. God gives us a wonderful record in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. God shows us who he is. He, he shows us the, the creation of man. 
he he shows us how he chose a a group of people to to do, do, to worship with them and fellowship with them out of this group of people he sent the messiah in other words god himself became a child a man child and lived on earth to show us how he wants us to live and then he gave himself on the cross to die for us he raised himself from the dead and then uh, uh poured out the holy spirit upon all who accept Jesus Christ as Savior, as Lord, and he shows us through his word how he wants us to live. And our purpose is to glorify God. The only reason why you and I exist is to glorify God. But mankind has been deceived by Satan. Mankind has been deceived every day. Satan is even using our political leaders to deceive people because Satan lets people know there's a better way. You don't have to obey God. But ladies and gentlemen, the wages of sin is death. And if God will uh, uh, permit his own people to be destroyed, uh, 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 what's he going to do to this world? And so the whole purpose of teaching this Bible is to teach about God, to, to draw, help people to draw near to God so that they can get saved. Salvation is free. And how to live holy unto God, uh, how to receive the Holy Spirit, and to get God's guidance for, on a daily basis because God does not want to send anybody into hell. 1 Peter 3, 9 says, God is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But mankind is, is hard-headed. We see this, um, CK, we see this down in Texas. Now, the, the mayor of Austin, Texas said today, please do not go out. Don't go out prematurely. Stay home. Stay in your homes. But CK is from uh, Austin, Texas, and, uh, and we've got people in Texas, Florida, Georgia, New York, uh, Pennsylvania, all over the nation, and, and riots in, in Michigan. We want to go out. We want to assemble. We want to do what we want to do. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in the times of hard-hearted people. And as we study the Bible, we look at some hard Hearted people. Yes, God chose them as their, his people, but they were hard-hearted, hard-headed, hard-hearted, and he had to, to, to punish them. And so we want you to take heed, to humble yourself before the Lord. These days, I mean, if you're not saved and you're listening to this uh, teaching tonight, if you're not saved, you need to get saved. You need to give your life to Jesus, surrender your life to Jesus, and begin trusting God and obeying God from now until the time that you either die or Jesus comes back and calls us home. Ladies and gentlemen, these are difficult times, and people are perishing. And many people are perishing without a knowledge of God in their lives. I know all this is introduction to the study, uh, our study tonight, but I just feel a, a burden on my heart. Uh, so many people go to church, they attend church. Folks don't know what to do now, that the churches are closed. But it's not about going to church. It's not about going to church. The Bible says you must be born again. And God is calling church folks to get saved. And, and, and a lot of you church folks, you, you can't assemble with others, and, and, and you're so dependent on, on church. Many people, their God is their church. Their God is First Baptist. Their God is Second Baptist. Their God is Third Pentecostal. Their God is Second Presbyterian. No, no, no. God is God. And God does not want you worshiping the church, worshiping the building. He wants you to worship him in spirit and in truth. So get saved and stay saved, ladies and gentlemen, because worse times are coming. Worse times are coming than what we see with this coronavirus. Worse times are coming. And God is not going to allow anyone to stand before him who was not born again. And you people are going to cry out, but God, I built churches in, in Kenya. I built churches in uh, Jamaica. I gave to the poor. I, I had soup kitchens. I gave blankets to uh, keep the, the cold warm. 
And Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. So let us use this time as we study the Bible together to also draw closer to the Lord. Make sure, be sure, be very sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior and Lord. And, 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 and don't let anybody keep you from getting into heaven. Don't let anybody keep you from getting your crown. Okay, so... First and Second Chronicles, written at the time, at the time when the Jeru the Jews had returned from Babylon, many did not return. The majority of Jews in Babylon uh, refused to return. They stayed in Babylon. Uh, uh, they died in Babylon, and and uh, there were three waves of exiles who were permitted to return back to Jerusalem. The first wave was led by Zerubbabel in, in the fi 500s B.C. Zerubbabel led that first wave. And then Ezra led the second wave. And then the third wave was uh, led by Nehemiah. By the time Nehemiah uh, led the third wave and the final wave of exiles out of Babylon, the, the, the temple of Jerusalem had been rebuilt and people had resettled, and I preached about this on Sunday. I preached about Nehemiah. So check out my um, YouTube channel, Leroy Carter forward slash, I'm, I'm sorry, YouTube forward slash Leroy Carter to get that message. It's entitled, Let Us Rise Up and Build. Build. By the time Nehemiah led that third wave out of Babylon, the, the temple had been rebuilt, but they needed walls around the city to protect themselves. And so it's in this uh, setting that later on, um, Ezra, who had hooked up with Nehemiah, they led a revival, and then the people of Jerusalem received the word of God. And then Old Testament history closes out. Old Testament history closes out, okay? And so we're looking at Ezra the scribe who's given the credit for writing this book, but the book may have been, some contrib con contributions to this book may have been made by a few others, such as the, the prophets Ahijah, Ido, Shemaiah, and Jehu. But we really believe that the chronicler, or the one who wrote the history, and the word chronicle, chronicle means history, the historian, or the chronicler, or the writer, was Ezra. Okay. And um, the main message in the books of Chronicles, First and Second Chronicles, is the temple, the house of the Lord. David desired to build a house for the Lord. And God gave his son, David's son, Solomon, the privilege of building a house for the Lord where people can come and worship the Lord God. Ladies and gentlemen, do not, please, do not allow your church to become your God. Do not worship the building. Do not worship the brick and mortar building. Don't even worship the online church. This online church is reaching people globally. We're in our sixth or seventh year as an online church. And I remember Dr. Gene Bratton, when we got started, people laughed at us. Oh, that's not a church. Uh, you're, you're crazy, Pastor Carter. Well, yep. God had us Thank out you. on the forefront, out on the vanguard, trying to reach people where the brick-and-mortar church could not go. And now we're taking a look at at uh, uh, seeing that what God had us doing years ago, he was, he was preparing an army, a cadre yes. of, of pastors and leaders to go and reach people with his word. And God knew, God knew that, clo that churches would be closed down in 2020. God yep. knew it. We couldn't see it, but he knew it. And he prepared a group of people who were, who were uh, crazy enough to obey God and to take the humili humiliation and the ridicule, and, 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 and the churches, the main, mainline churches, looked down on us. 
the brick and mortar churches look down on us, say, well, you're just a cult. You're trying to just do, and no, no, we're trying to obey, obey God. God is using this online church to reach people in areas where people can't even go. And I, I mean, Muslims are listening to these these broadcasts, and and secretly, uh, Muslims are 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 are, are uh, watching these YouTube presentations. Why? Because they have a hunger. For Jesus worldwide, ladies and gentlemen, there's a hunger for Jesus, and at the same time, Satan is trying to cover it all, to camouflage it all by hitting mankind with with mass destruction, like a coronavirus or a a, a uh, HIV virus or uh, catastrophes or, or 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 earthquakes. But, ladies and gentlemen, keep your eyes on God. And seek him with all your heart. Now, what we're going to do is go through Chronicles tonight. Uh, our assignment for tonight is the first 12 chapters of Chronicles. I am not going to read all 12 chapters of Chronicles. Your, your job between now and next Wednesday night is to read chapters 1 through 12 and answer the questions that are required for homework. Once again, if you don't have those questions, I contact me. I will email them to you or send them to you so you can do your homework. But um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time reading, and I want you to read along with me so that you will, after tonight, after tonight, I do not expect any of you to ever, 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 ever again be afraid of reading these names in these genealogies. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. Amen. We're going to look at this genealogy starting in chapter 1 of Chronicles. I'm going to read a lot of it and what the... The chronicler is doing. You've got to picture why this genealogy is in this book of Chronicles. The captives have been brought back from Babylon, and Ezra's purpose is to help reestablish the nation, reestablish households, help build up the people of God again. And so uh, they learn their genealogy. And the whole purpose, God is showing them that uh, uh, he's showing them that they are all descendants of Adam. And, and, and the genealogy traces them from Adam all the way to the uh, Babylonian, Babylonian captivity. But then... The Lord is showing them that they are not only the, children, the sons of descendants of Adam, but is leading them to observe and receive the second Adam, who is Jesus Christ. That's the purpose for this entire book of Chronicles. And when all the scattered Jews are brought back to their homeland in the 500s B.C., they're able to pick up where they left off and, 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 and lay claim to land that was given to their forefathers. It's very important to know that before Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Babylon, Jeremiah purchased a, par, a parcel of land, he, and he owned the deed. He secured the deed to land. That deed was secured and was made very important to the fact that when, when the Jews came back to Babylon, from Babylon, and the surrounding tribes, Sanballat, Geshem, On, uh, Tobiah, all those whom we see in the book of Nehemiah who opposed the Jews' ownership of the land, the Jews could lay claim to the land because Jeremiah, before he died, he preserved the deed to the land. And so this whole book of Chronicles starts off with showing the Jews who their forefathers were and how 
they had ownership to this land, even though they were taken away captive for 70 years and they returned that this was their land. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, you could use this book of First Chronicles to demonstrate to those nations that hate Israel today. There are nations that hate Israel. There are nations that want to destroy Israel. They want to wipe Israel off the map. And they almost did so between the time of, uh, of Nehemiah, actually 70 A.D., 70 A.D. when the Romans destroyed the city of Jerusalem and they scattered the Jews all over the world. But when uh, uh, the United Nations declared Israel to be a, 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 a nation, a modern nation in 1947, we see in 1948 and 49 Jews from all over the world returning to Israel and one of the things they laid hold on was this geneal genealogical record that is included in, in, the, in the Chronicles. So this uh, genealogy is very, very important. So I'm just going to read a little bit and um, share with you that you don't have to be afraid anymore of seeing these genealogies. I know a lot of you out there, when you looked at this, well, man, that's God, we got to read this. And so, and some of you began reading this, Adam, Sheth, and Enosh, Kenan, no, you know, Methuselah, Noah, and you not Noah, Shem, Ham, Japheth, mm -hmm. the son of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, and the son, and, and before long, some I'm gonna. Some of you didn't even last three minutes, but we're gonna go beyond the three limit, three minute limit tonight, okay? And my challenge to you in First Chronicle is to find Job. We all know about Job. We read, we will read and study the book of Job. We hear Job's trials. But I want you to find Job in this genealogy. Don't say anything, Dr. Gene Bratton. Karen Herzog, don't say anything now. Jackie Carter, don't say anything because you all know where it is. But I, I challenge you to find Job in this genealogy. And, uh, and, then, and then another challenge as we look at the genealogy, uh, a lot of you read the book of... Uh, uh, the prayer of Jabez, the prayer of Jabez, and then uh, then I want you to tell me why is Jabez in First Chronicles chapter four, when everybody else who's mentioned in in First Chronicles first uh, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, all of them have a father, but you don't see anything about Jabez's father. So find for me who is Jabez's father. Okay, all right. So let's start. Adam, First Chronicles chapter one. Adam, Sheth, Enosh, Kenan, Mahalaleel. When you read the scriptures, when you read these names or these places, break them down into syllables and pronounce each syllable. Uh, if you have a Bible that has the hash mark that breaks the syllables down, this is good. Kenan, verse two. Kenan, Mahalaleel, Jared, Henoch. Methuselah. Now, Enoch is actually Enoch. Enoch is the one who walked with God. Okay? Enoch didn't die. He's one of two people in the Bible who did not die. Okay? Who was the other, Dr. Bratton? Excuse me, I was on. I was on Enoch, the Enoch did not die. Who was the other did That's not right. die? That's right. And also... Um, it was, I'm going to give them a clue, the one who was taken up in heaven, uh, made one of the prophets. In a chariot. In a chariot. I'll, I'll just give the clue and I won't say the name. Roger Pond Sr. wants to say Elijah, so we take that. Okay. That's right. It was Elijah, yes. Chapter 3, verse 1. This is Enoch. He never, he never died. He, he he didn't, and, and, and he'll be one of two prophets who will come back in the end days and live yes. on earth again 
and then he'll be put to death on the in uh, uh, at the at the the sermon mount in Jerusalem. Okay, we see Methuselah in uh, verse three. Methuselah, the oldest man ever to live, nine hundred sixty nine. He lived to be nine hundred sixty nine years. Lamech. Then we see Noah, Shem, and Noah's three sons: Shem, Ham, and Japheth, the sons of Japheth. Then it goes to the sons of Jacob, Japheth, Japheth, Japheth. Then the sons of uh, Ham, and then the sons of Shem. Okay, so as we read this um, scripture, verse five: the sons of Japheth, Gomer, and Magog, and Madiah. And Javan and Tubal and Meshach and Tyrus and the sons of Gomer. No, not Gomer Pyle, Gomer. Ashkenaz and Repath and Togramah and the sons of Javan, Elisha and Tershish and Kittim and Dodanim, the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraim, Put and Canaan. And the sons of Cush, Seba and Havilah and Sabta and Rehomah and Saptika and the sons of Ramah, Sheba, and Dedan. And so um, when I look at the sons of Ham, Ham had these sons, Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. But uh, you don't know anything. We don't get anything about their wives. We get the father's name, but we don't get the mother's name. But somewhere along the line, Ham uh, uh, had, 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 had to be hooked up with the black woman because Cush, when you read the, anytime you see Cush in the Bible, you're looking at Ethiopians, black people, African people. That's a clue. I wrote a whole book, Black Heroes of the Bible, about 21 characters in the Bible who were Ethiopians or uh, Abyssinians or, or of Cushite background and, and their stories. And so... Um, People say, oh, you just made that up, but blacks in the Bible. No, I did a intense research, and one of the key words in there is Cush. And so a lot of people yeah. say, well, Ham was black. He was cursed. Ham was not cursed, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Amen. His son Cush was cursed. Ham was not cursed. And so, and the racist, the biblical race, I'm talking about some of these evangelicals too, man. They still preach this madness. Well, you know, the black, black, black people are cursed, African Americans are cursed uh, because of Ham. Lie, preacher, shut up. You don't know what you're yeah. talking about. Quit promoting that ignorance. Ham was not cursed in the Bible. When, when uh, the two sons found their father uh, naked, mm -hmm. then the third son looked on him, but God did not curse the That's right. son who looked on, on, on him. The curse was on Cush, the Cushites, okay? Uh, and, 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 his, his, uh, and his descendants, okay? So let's go on down. Um, Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty, be mighty upon the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the Masonic order, the Masonic order, the sign of the Masons that is, is all about Nimrod. And they've made up, manufactured all these stories and tales about Nimrod. The Bible only gives us a little bit of information about Nimrod. And then in Genesis, how he tried to build a tower, the Tower of Babylon. But... Um, We've got so many people caught up in the Masonic order and these secret societies, and, and, they, and their God is, they idolize uh, Nimrod. Ladies and gentlemen, flee idolatry, the Bible says. I included, I included Nimrod in my book, Black Heroes of the Bible. Why did I do it? To blow away ignorance to let people know that what they're saying about Nimrod is not true. They've made up a lot of stuff. The Bible only gives us a little bit of information. But people take stuff, and they hear stuff, and they hear what their mama said and their grandmama said, or what uh, 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 Little Willie John said or, or, or Deacon uh, Foster said, and they go with it. And, and, and much of it is wives' tales and conjecture. 
So that's why we're going to look into the Bible, and um, I'll be highlighting some of these people so we know the truth about them. And Mizraim, verse 11, beget Ludim. Now, anytime you see the word beget, that means fathered. Okay? Mizraim fathered Ludim. And Anamim. And Lehabim. And Nephtuhim. Now, they had some funny names back in those days, didn't they? All those hymns, all those ites. Verse 12. And Pathrusim and Kasluhim, of whom came the Philistines. So you see the origin of the Philistines. You know, Goliath and, and his people came from Kasluhim. And Kaphtharim. And Canaan begat Zidon, his firstborn, and Heth. And so we see Canaan, uh, uh, the, the son of, of um, Noah, Canaan, and, and, and the ones he begat. The, Je the Jebusite also, and the Amorite, and the Girgashite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, and the Arvidite, and the Zemurite, and the Hamathite. All these are ites. All these became enemies of Israel, ladies and gentlemen. And then I have another book that I've written. The giants are back. Satan and, 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 and these ites, these ites go back to Genesis chapter 4, verse 6. There were giants in the land. Satan, when he heard about, when he heard God speak uh, in the Garden of Eden, the words recorded in Genesis 3.15, when God told Satan, and the seed of the woman will bruise your head, and you will bruise his heel, Satan realized, uh-oh, there's going to be the seed of the woman. God's going to produce someone through a woman, and he's going to bruise my head. Satan had warning, ladies and gentlemen, from God from Genesis 3.15, that God was going to destroy Satan, somebody, a seed of a woman, was going to bruise his head. What did Satan do? Satan tried to mess up. He went to his lab, like they say some Chinese did, and manufactured something. Satan went to his lab, and he created giants. How did he do this? Well, God spoke and said, the seed of the woman is going to crush my head, Satan said. So I'm going to get the seed of the woman. How? Well, I'm going to get uh, my fallen angels to have intercourse with women. Ladies and gentlemen, it's in the Bible. Satan created a race of people. He took the fallen angels. And angels, angels can assume physical bodies. And angels can reproduce. How? Angels uh, lived on the earth. This, this is all in the book of Genesis. And they found women. And they married these women and created a race of giants. That's how giants came on the earth. All these Jebusites and Amorites and Girgashites and Hivites and Archites and Sinites and Arvidites and Zemurites and Hamathites. All these are the descendants, are the ancestors of Goliath. And when we study uh, Joshua chapter 13, when Joshua was giving out the land, distributing the land to the, the Jews after they crossed the Jordan into the Canaan land, Caleb. 85-year-old Caleb came up to Joshua and said, Now, Joshua, 45 years ago, when you and I spied out the land, he said, I saw giants in this mountain, so I want you to give me this mountain. There are giants still living here, and I want to clean them out so that my, and my, my descendants will not have to fight a race of giants. And Caleb, in uh, the 14th chapter of Joshua, along with his sons, cleaned out, wiped out, put a beat down, as Dr. Gene Bratton would say, put a beat down on the giants. So this whole genealogical thing is important. So when you read the genealogy, and if you're going over like, the sons of Shem, 
I wonder what's on TV. I mean, some people can only last three or four minutes reading these genealogies. But if you take your time and read it, you'll find a lot. Look at verse 19. And unto Abar were born two sons. Abar, well, who was Abar? Abar was the father of the Hebrews. We get the word Hebrew from Abar. Abar had two sons. The name of the one was Peleg, and his, uh, his brother's name was Joktan. Okay, verse 20, and Joktan begat Almondad and Sheleph and Hazarmaveth and Jerah, Hadaram also, and Uzal, and Dikla, and Ebal, and Abimael, and Sheba, and Ophir, and Havilah, and Jobad. All these were the sons of Joktan. And so, uh, verse 22, when you see Sheba, when we read about the queen of Sheba, around the year uh, uh, 990, 1000, uh, well, 9, 950, B.C. Sheba, the queen who came to visit with uh, Solomon, she was the queen of Sheba. So where was Sheba? You've got to do your geographical research, your genealogical research to discover who Sheba was. And Ophir, Ophir, this is where they got the tusks, the, the elephant tusk and the ivory uh, and the gold. And so uh, we're looking into Africa, uh, the sons of, of, of uh um, Eber, okay? And so as you read more, don't be afraid of these words. Verse 25, Eber, meaning the father of the Hebrews, Peleg, Reu, Serug, Nahor, Terah. Now when you're looking at Serug, Nahor, Terah, then you're looking at Abram's father, Terah. Terah was Abram's father. And when you look in the book of Genesis, when God spoke to Abram, he was not known as Abraham yet. He was called Abram. Abram left with Terah, his father, and his nephew Lot, and Haran, his brother. And they left the place called Haran, which was an Ur of the Chaldees. And so we look at this genealogy and we see, we see God picking out a people. We see all of these lists of people, starting with Adam and Adam's sons, and uh, then coming through uh, Methuselah and Lamech and Noah and Noah's sons, uh, and then all the way down to Abram. And then we can identify this Abram with the Abram in Genesis chapter 12, whom God spoke to and said, I'm going to make you the father of a great nation. So verse 28, we see Isaac and Ishmael. These are their generations. Then on the next page, there's a lot of genealogy in here, ladies and gentlemen, and I can't read it all, but um, please, please, read, read these. Names will pop up, and, and, and you'll discover a lot of history just in these first couple chapters. For example, let's look at verse 32 of Chapter 1, First Chronicles. Now the sons of Keturah, Abraham's concubine. Abraham had a concubine. Remember, Sarai died. Sarah died. Abraham married his concubine, who was uh, Keturah. And she gave, she bare children. <clears throat> Abraham, I was telling Jackie, Last night, I said, hmm, Abraham was old as dirt when Sarah died, but he got his second win. He must have discovered Viagra because in chapter 32, Abraham was not old and burnt out. His wife Sarah had died, and then Abraham fathered Zimran, Jokshan, Medan, and Midian. And Ishbak and Shua. So we see there was some procreation doing, going on there. And um, 
Abraham had not finished producing. And as we continue, we look down at verse 36. The sons of Eliphaz, Teman, and Omar, Zephi, and Getam, Kenaz, Timnah, and Amalek. The sons of Ruel, Nahath, Zerah, Shemal, and Mizah. And so read these, read these genealogies, ladies and gentlemen, and you'll get a good grip on history. And why do I keep on saying history? Because of people who don't know, a people who don't know their history don't know themselves. It is important that each of us know our history, to know where we came from and to know where we are going. And then uh, look at uh, verse 51. Hadad died also, and the dukes, the dukes of Edom were Duke Timna, Duke Aliah, Duke Jetha, Jetheth, Duke Aholibama. Can you imagine having a name Aholibama? Duke Elah, Duke Pinon, Duke Tenaz, Duke Teman, Duke Mizbar, the Duke of Earl. No, no, Dr. Bratton, the Duke of Earl is not in there. I just made that up just to make sure you all stay in the The Duke of Earl is not in that genealogy <laughs> in First Chronicles chapter 1. Okay. Then chapter 2, we get more into uh, some familiar names. These are the sons of Israel. And sons of Israel, well, what do you mean? Israel was Jacob. God changed his name uh, when Jacob wrestled with the angel. God changed his name. He said, you have prevailed with me, so I'm going to call you Israel. And so Jacob uh, is the namesake. Um, his name becomes synonymous with Israel. Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, Issachar, Zebulon, Dan, Joseph, Benjamin, Nephtali, Gad, and Asher. These are the 12 tribes of Israel, ladies and gentlemen. And they had, they had a sister. These, these 12 men had, had a sister. The sons of Judah. Okay, so, so um, Judah was one of the sons of Jacob. Okay, and so what, what, what the Lord is doing in showing us this genealogy Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. And so he highlights the tribe of Judah, Aaron, Onan. Now look, Jesus did not come from a line of goody-goodies. Okay? Everybody in that uh, genealogy is not a goody-goody. Aaron -goody. and Onan. Onan messed up. Aaron died and left a wife. And Onan had the responsibility. It's called the right of leveret marriage. When an older brother died and left a wife, a younger brother had the responsibility of marrying the older brother's wife and providing a child uh, by that woman, and the child would be named after it would be the older brother's child. Well, Er died, and Onan had the responsibility of going into his deceased brother's wife and marrying her, and, and fathering a child through her. And at a certain point in that encounter, Er spilled his seed on the ground. He let her rip, but it ripped on the ground. And he sinned against God. And guess what God did? Mm-hmm. God killed Onan, because Onan let his seed fall on the ground instead of procreating with uh, his deceased brother's wife. Okay, so, I mean, we learn a lot in, in this genealogy, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, down in verse 3, And Er, the firstborn of Judah, was evil in the sight of the Lord, and he slew him. And that caught some of you who said, Oh, no, God never kills anybody. He killed Er. It says so in uh, verse 3. Aaron was evil in the sight of the Lord, and he slew him. 
And Tamar, his daughter-in-law, bare him Pharaoh and Zerah. We're looking at the genealogy of Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. Judah's daughter-in-law. Judah was one of uh, the uh, 12 sons of Jacob. And Jesus came through the tribe of Judah. He's known as the lion of the tribe of Judah. And, and, and uh, but there were some corrupt people in Jesus' genealogy. Okay? But the beautiful thing is, keep this in mind, Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary. The Holy Ghost was his father. And there was no corruption. Uh, the, the, the perfect seed of God was planted in a virgin uh, 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 habitation in, inside of Mary. And Jesus was born without sin, ladies and gentlemen. There was no sin in his blood. There was sin in his bloodline in his in his uh, 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 ancestry, but there was no sin in Jesus. No, and this is why we've got to hold on to our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. No sin was found in him. Now we got people. Uh, we know people. They worship Allah. They worship Buddha. They worship uh, 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 the Atlanta Braves. They worship the Chicago Cubs. Uh, they worship uh, Tiger Woods. They worship. Uh, uh, Mike Tyson, but ladies and gentlemen, we worship the living God who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Okay, and then let's just fast forward a little bit. Verse 18 of chapter 2, and Caleb, the son of Hezron, begot children of Azuba, his wife. Caleb is one of my most favorite people in the Bible. And at the age of 85, he said, hey, look, there's giants. And there are giants in that mountain. Uh, I'm just as strong as I was as, as I was 45 years ago for war. He said to Joshua, give me this mountain. And when you distribute the land, give me this mountain. Uh, I'll drive these giants out. And so... Um, Caleb, we see Caleb's story, okay? And we go on and on um, looking at the ancestry. And then chapter 3, we look at David's ancestry, okay? We go through Judah's and uh, descendants, and now we're looking at David's ancestry beginning in chapter 3. Okay, but I don't want to, don't want you skipping over some of these difficult names. Don't be afraid of these names. Take them syllable by syllable. Like chapter two, verse fifty-four, the sons of Salma, Bethlehem, Bethlehem. Salma was the father of Bethlehem. So we see the origin of the city of Bethlehem, and the Net Net Netophathites, Ataroth, the house of Joab, and half of the Manahathites, the Zorites, and the families of the scribes which dwelt at Jabez. Oh, Jabez. Everybody heard about the prayer of Jabez. We'll see more about Jabez in chapter 4. And the families of the scribes which dwelt at Jabez. But we don't see Jabez's father's name. We see the Terathites and the Shimeathites and the Sukathites. These are the Kenites that came of Hemoth, the father of the house of Rechab. So these are all, these are giants, ladies and gentlemen. These were the products. Listen, these were people living in the Canaan land who were the products of a race of men created by Satan to, uh, to destroy the seed of the woman. Satan did not want the seed of the woman to be produced on earth. And that is why he tried all he could. He tried to create a race of giants to destroy God's people, and they tried to destroy uh, the seed of God. They tried to keep the uh, 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 children of God from getting into the Canaan land. Even in the Canaan land, Satan had that place reeking with giants to prevent Israel, the children of God, for taking over that land. But God had a plan and God's plan will be carried out. Okay, now, 
let's go over to I ask you I ask you where um, do we find Job? Where do we find Job? Okay. We take that question first. Let's fast forward to chapter seven of First Chronicles. Chapter seven of First Chronicles. I'm going to assume you all are going to do your homework. Read these chapters. Read 1 to 12 for this week. Now the sons of Issachar were. And who was Issachar? Issachar was one of the 12 sons of Jacob. Okay, he's the leader of one of the tribes of Israel. Now the sons of Issachar were Tola and Pua, Jashub and Shimram, four. It tells us Issachar had four sons. Ladies and gentlemen, guess what? Jashub. Circle his name in your Bible. Jashub. First Chronicles seven one. Jashub. That's the Job we find in the book of Job. That is Job. Okay? So when we study the book of Job, we'll refer back to this. His name was Jashub, and Jashub uh, was uh, synonymous with Job. Okay, so we've discovered Job. We know who his father was. His father was Issachar. And Job lived during the time of the patriarchs. Job was one of the wealthiest men on the planet, and he was one of... Jacob's uh, grandchildren, Issachar was his father. Job was the great grandson of Abraham. The Holy Ghost let us nail it. We nail it. We can nail it. We can pin him down. Okay, so let's flip back to chapter 4 of First Chronicles. And I think we'll stop with chapter 4. And I um, think I'll give you all enough. Maybe we'll stop the chapter yet. A little bit of chapter 12 after this. Uh, chapter 4, we want to look at, in the year 2000, a book came out, The Prayer of Jabez. Everybody in Christianity was reading The, the Prayer of Jabez. And we had people reciting, we were reciting The Prayer of Jabez. And it all comes from First Chronicles chapter 4, Verses 9 through 10. Now we see all through this, these first opening chapters, we see who begat whom and who was the son of whom and this and that, and he was the son of so-and-so. And all of a sudden, verse 9 and 10 of chapter 4, we see a whole different narrative. And we don't see anybody begetting anybody or who was the son of anybody. It says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that mine hand, thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may, may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. And a lot of us learned that prayer, and we were reciting that prayer. Preachers were preaching from the prayer of Jabez. Oh, that thou will bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, and keep me from evil, so that I won't be a pain in anybody's neck, that I won't cause anybody pain. And God granted him that which he requested. It's odd that you see this narrative set in the backdrop of chapter 4 of Chronicles. First Chronicles. We don't see any uh, 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 ancestry for Jabez, and we don't see any lineage. We don't see his father, and we don't see whom he fathered. But it's, it's like the, the scriptures has taken, are taking a panoramic view of all these people and, and stops and focuses on Jabez and says, now this man Jabez, and the Bible doesn't even tell us who his father was. 
or who his children were. But he was more honorable than his brothers. So Jabez lived in a time of corruption. He had corrupt brothers. We don't know who they were, but he was more honorable than, than them. And his mother named him Jabez, meaning sorrow, sorrowful. That means uh, he's caused me a lot of sorrow. Or she's saying, I'm living in a time of sorrow. Or I've got all these other sons, they're, they're grieving my spirit. But I'm going to name this one Jabez because I bear him during a time of sorrow. And you don't even get her husband's name or Jabez's father's name. Okay? So maybe he, she, he, might, he might have been born out of wedlock. I don't know. But it's amazing that we get this scripture of one during these times who loved the Lord. And we see his prayer. And his prayer is there. And he says, oh, God, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast. And that your hand might be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that it might not grieve me. And God granted him that which he, re that which he requested. Sound like the 23rd Psalm, and lead me not into temptation, but deliver yes. me from evil. And, and yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And, and ladies and gentlemen, this prayer should 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 uh, fire every one of us up that even in the midst of dark times a coronavirus and this and that that we have hope in God that we can be just like Jabez and put our trust in the Lord that no matter whatever challenges no matter whatever sorrows are surrounding us we have our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I mean I mean, I almost feel like preaching, y'all, but I ain't going to go there, okay? Praise God. But this, I mean, this book is so wonderful. And then I said I was going to end there, but I did tell you I might go to chapter 12. So let's take a little look at First Chronicles chapter 12. Don't forget all these names in here now, okay? You read these names and pronounce them um, syllable by syllable. And, 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 and make sure you get them. But well, let's finish up with chapter 12 tonight. Just a little bit of it. Uh, and chapter 12 is about, all about David's mighty men. Now these are they that came to David to Ziklag while he yet kept himself close because of Saul, the son of Kish. You know, uh, 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 David uh, practiced um, um, isolation from Saul. He safe distanced himself. Let's put it that way. David safe distanced himself because of King Saul. Why? Because, of sin, because King Saul was crazy. He was out of his mind. He, had no, he didn't have any sense. Okay, he hated David. He was jealous. He wanted to kill David. So David practiced uh, safe distancing himself from Saul. We said so in first, this twelve ver uh, chapter twelve verse one. While he yet kept himself close because of Saul the son of Kish, and they were among the mighty men helpers of the war. But David, even though he he ran from Saul and practice self-distancing himself from Saul. He knew Saul was out to kill him because Saul knew that, Na that uh, 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 Nathan had anointed David to be the next, I'm, I'm sorry, Samuel had anointed David to be the next king of Israel. And so Saul hated David's guts, and, and David was running. He, he was running from Saul and Saul's army, and then David had to run from the Philistines from time to time. And then at one point, I mean, his life was so critical, Saul was on near, nearly on top of him that David had to fake being crazy to dwell among his enemies, the Philistines, and they gave him a sanctuary because David pretended he was crazy. Okay? And so but David had with him these so-called mighty men. The Bible calls them mighty men, 600 of them. 600 of them. 
And these were these were men. Most of them were thugs. Okay, thugs, crooks. You know, uh, uh, lawbreakers. On 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 uh, they were on uh, King Saul's hit list. Saul hated them, and so so they surrounded themselves around David and said, "You be our leader." And so David and these six hundred men in their headquarters was a place called Ziklag. Read First Samuel chapter thirty about this and 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 the great things that took place at Ziklag, and uh, even these mighty men, as loyal as they were to David, on one occasion when the Amalekites came upon their camp and 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 burned their camp down and and stole their wives and children, and David and his mighty men came back to Ziklag and discovered our wives are gone, our children are gone, our village is burnt down, and these mighty men, loyal and faithful to David, said, we're going to stone you to death. We're going to kill you because if it weren't for us following after you, we would have been here to protect protect our families. But read First uh, Samuel chapter 30. It's uh, amazing and see what God did. But these mighty men, these mighty men, surrounded David and kept him and kept him alive and when David became king David did not forget his mighty men who helped him and stuck with him uh, even though there were was what time they wanted to kill him but they stuck by David and ladies and gentlemen if God gives you a friend God gives you somebody uh, and they stick with you through thick and thin then rejoice, rejoice, and, and, and love your friends and, be, and honor your friends and, and, and be glad that God has put somebody in your life uh, to stand by you. By the way, speaking of that, I uh, just want to, uh, before I turn it over to Jackie Carter, I want to thank Jackie Carter for being mighty in my life. And um, tomorrow we celebrate our ninth wedding anniversary, nine years. Nine years she stuck with me through thick and thin, in good times, in bad times, uh, knowing she could always count on Lee. Well, we've had good times, we've had bad times, but praise God for this wonderful woman. And uh, thank God, David had his mighty men. I got my mighty, mighty uh, 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 wife and, 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 and one chosen by the Lord. And Dr. Jean Bratton was there to witness our wedding and all that. So having said that, praise God, let's conclude this portion of the lesson. I'm going to turn it over to Jackie Carter, and she will entertain any questions you have, any comments, and then we have closing prayer. And then after we um, stop the recording, I'll take any of your questions. Jackie? Hi, everybody. I sure am glad the record was playing so I can have that on tape. It's, it's recorded for posterity, <laughs> baby. <laughs> At any rate, um, there are no questions, and thanks for the anniversary wishes, everyone. Oh, before, there are no Jackie, questions. Jackie, 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 before that, yeah. before that, I want to let Roger Pond know that I ain't dumb, Roger. I ain't stupid. I, I know. Look, look. I got to live in this house, Roger. So I'm gonna make sure this the environment is good, Roger. You know where I'm coming from. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, thanks for the uh, anniversary wishes um, in the chat room. But there are no questions. Um, as usual, Jean has offered some uh, very enlightening commentary uh, as you taught. And uh, I always take her notes while I'm taking your notes, and hopefully others are doing the same. And at this time, we will take a few minutes if there is someone who has uh, a question that they would like to ask to go ahead and pose it at this time. Or unmute your phones. And it's good to see so many of you back. Uh, Brian and Justina and uh, so many of you, it's, it's just good to, to have you back with us. Any questions or comments on tonight's lesson? It's good to be back with y'all. Brian, hey, Brian, God bless you. 
God bless you guys. Okay, Lee, can you unmute everyone? Uh, I think you have Justina muted and maybe Jean and some others. Okay. Just. One of the things that, um, and if he doesn't have you muted and you muted yourself, just star six or um, release your mute uh, button on your screen. One of the things, there were lots of things that I found interesting about um, the first 12 chapters, but I always look for the names of the women because we don't hear a lot about them, but obviously they do play a very significant role. And in many of those, the women, you do later come back and see and hear from some of them. But uh, I always kind of focus on them because I think it's interesting, too, to see who the mothers of these children were. And so many of them were concubines, and, and they were second wives and third wives. Um, but that was just something that, that I focus on and that I highlight as well. Are there any other comments or questions? One thing, uh, thank you, Jackie, praise God. One thing, ladies and gentlemen, please don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. If you have a question, this is the time to ask them comments, and um, we, 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 we honor your questions. We like to let you know that we care about your questions. If, if you're having trouble unmuting, the star six should unmute if you're trying to get on. And if you can't come on with your questions, send me an email or a text message, 404-205-1101. And we really hope that you will take this course and, 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 and get the three credits. Get the three credits. This course is free. It's not costing you anything. Or if you don't even want to take it for a course, just you want it for the Bible knowledge, you're going to get a lot of knowledge out of this class. But I'm saying while you're doing it, hey, you go ahead and, and study for, for the credit. And once you get these three credits, you only need, only need 12 more, 12 more credits, and you have a degree. And by the way, Back to Basic School of Ministry is fully accredited. It's amazing how quickly God did this, but we are fully accredited. We're a new, relatively new school, uh, just about 10 years old as a school. But we have our full accreditation, and that's uh, a lot of schools do not have accreditation. <coughs> I see Pastor Sam Gale on. So come on, say hello to us, Pastor Sam. I know you got a question, Pastor Sam. Praise the Lord, Pastor Carter. We just hey, en brother. enjoyed hearing the, the word of God, and it's always important to, to know lineage. And even if we don't uh, find value in it, there's something there that can help all of us in our course of studying. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for Pastor Sam Gale. He's an assistant uh, to Pastor Gene Bratton and, uh, in the uh, Living Water Fellowship. Also Minister Loretta Jackson. You all, you all got a powerful ministry there. Praise God, and, and I love the way you all are studying together to study the Word of God. Praise God, there are a lot of churches where people don't take the time to study God. This is building, this is building uh, strength in God's people for leadership. And uh, time may come where, where God will have you leading your own fellowship, but get all that you can now. Praise God. Uh, Roger Pond Sr., can you come yes, in sir. and say hello to us? Praise God. I will. And Good. I'm just a happy old man to be a part of this uh, group that's wanting to join in on God's, you know, learn God's Word. Uh, you know, it's like I told my son once, you know, neither one of us love him to death, 
neither one of us finished school. We don't have a degree in hang on the wall from school or college, but we each have our own special certificate of biblical theology. And to me, that's that that doctorate I got hanging on my wall is worth more to me than any amount of high school. Praise God. Praise God. But praise God. Like yourself, you know, we got beat up by the military there for a while. Yes. But every once in a while, people ask me, well, where's your church? Where's your church? The church is wherever I'm at. I got the whole city of Carlisle. I preach around in not just a building. Praise God. It's a wonderful you know, place. Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Yes, sir. Jim Thorpe came out. Jim Thorpe came out of Carlisle. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Praise God. But, praise God. And ladies and gentlemen, Roger Pond is a, a great man. He's a, a great, great man of God, and I'm saying he's great. He served in Vietnam. He and his brother uh, served in Vietnam, and uh, he's a he's a veteran. We honor our veterans, and uh, and then Roger's son, Roger Jr. Uh, graduated with a, an associate's degree from our school last year. Roger Jr. is on tonight. And uh, we thank God for the Pond family. And uh, if you want to go on and get another piece of paper to hang on your wall, you just hang on in there with us, okay? <laughs> That's how you do it. Amen, amen. Praise God. But there's nothing too difficult. We don't. I want you all to think this is difficult. It's not just... Just make up your mind. I'm going to stick with this. I'm going to stick with this, and uh, and and challenges will come up. But learn how to weather the storm. Dustina, come on and tell us about some of the challenges that might come up, and how they can weather the storms. Are you referring to challenges in life or challenges through this study? <laughs> a little, little bit of both at the same time. A little bit of both. A little bit of both. Yeah, a little bit of both, Dustin. Because I'll tell you, as, as you're doing the lessons and you're doing the study, the enemy will come at you in an instant. He And he will try and hinder. He will try to intervene. And but that tells you right there that there's something good. There's yes. something real, real good that you're getting into, and it's amazing. I love it. And I, I if he wants to come at me, come at me. I got the Holy Spirit, and the Lord's going to cover me. And I'm just I'm going to keep pushing through, and I'm going to keep rebuking him. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Um, I do have a question, and bear with me. I'm going to try and explain this the way that I can. Um. On question number two of our lesson, it, where it says that in each of the following verses, note the incidents which attribute seemingly natural or man-made occurrences to God's direct action. Now, the each verses that you have on here, now do we have to give like in detail of whether it was man-made or, you know, natural? Or, you know, you've seen my work. I go in-depth, detail, and <laughs> I, I do a lot of research. So I just need to know how you want that exactly demonstrated or written out there. Okay, praise God. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. You don't have to uh, identify whether it's man-made or natural. Just identify the, the challenge, okay? Uh, okay. That and and a, a brief a brief right. word on it. Um, okay. And, and, okay, for example, identify the challenge and um, a brief word about it, how it was overcome, that sort of thing. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure so I do this correctly. Okay, okay. By the way, by the way, Jackie brought something to my attention last night, and this will help everybody. Uh, Jackie showed me the syllabus of our schedule for this semester. By the way, if you don't have this, Make sure you get it. Email me or call me. I will send you a copy. And make sure you have, so you can follow our schedule between now and July 22nd. And Jackie was asking me about the homework because she was, I mean, it was almost about 11 o'clock p.m. last night, and she's struggling trying to get her homework assignments done. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, Jackie, wait a minute. I said, what are you trying to do? Well, you said that. You want us to have this 
assignment done by this time. <laughs> so, so, Dustina and, and, yeah. and Jackie, um, and I, I, she had misread what I said. And, mm -hmm. and she was trying to get Eric, Dr. Bratton, Jackie was trying to get this whole lesson completed before tonight. <laughs> well, Whereas, I, I, I feel her because I've already started on mine as well. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah, why yeah, I yeah, asked yeah, about yeah. question two. I've already okay. done question okay, one. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let me take Agreed. some of the so. pressure off. <laughs> Let me take the pressure off y'all, okay? Look, this syllabus, for example, lesson one, May 6th. 2020. That's tonight. Mm -hmm. That does not mean you have to have question one and question two answered by tonight. Right. It means that I'm going to go over the lesson. I'm going to highlight the lesson and, and, and the readings. And then you have between now and next Wednesday to complete these questions. But in completion, in completing these questions, I want you to read the scriptural assignments. Mm -hmm. So you have a, I'll make a presentation on a Wednesday. Your homework is not due until the following week. Okay, but in doing your, home, doing your homework, make sure you read the assignment. I don't want people just going looking for answers and not reading because there's a right. lot of material to, that you can read. And a lot you will miss out on if you don't read the assignments. So let's take that pressure off you that you have to have all these things done by the night I make my presentation. No, let me make my presentation, and then you take a whole week to complete your assignment. Amen. Yeah, and if you don't read, I mean, you kind of miss out because your answers are pretty much in the scriptures. Yes, The Holy yes, Spirit yes. will give it to you. So Yes. Yeah, so that, definitely. So that Dustina, by July 22nd, when this cool, when I make the last presentation for this course, that does not mean that you have to have everything done by July 22nd. You've got, you've got the month of August to make up anything you don't cover. You make it up during the month of August, but we're gonna, we will finish the course on July 22nd, which means you have at least a week to complete your homework. If you need more than that, go ahead. And then right. just be ready by the first week of September for the next semester. Well, you, and, and you saw that when I sent you the email of four lessons where I'd Man, forgot. Man, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> let me tell you about this lady from Tennessee. My life is hectic right now and covered up. I'm staying busy. I tell you what. One thing, you can trust a woman from Tennessee. You can trust her. Okay? She sent me four lessons yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, four and I said, well, okay, one thing, you're a woman of your word, Dustina, and you did yes, well sir. on each one of them. Yes, indeed. And, oh, God. But I wanted you to know that you don't have to rush through that because every one of you have family things you need to take care of, your own personal things. And so um, don't try, don't, you don't have to have everything in on the date of the assignment. Uh, right. When I make a presentation, well, you can tell me that, but my OCD, my OCD won't allow me. <laughs> yeah, I, I yes. like to do what I have to do and get it done. It's just who yeah. I am. <laughs> yes, but from now on until you finish, and from now on until you, you finish your doctorate, you know how we roll, okay? Amen. All right. I sure am glad that that helped somebody since I was out it. Yeah, yeah, I felt so, so. I felt, I felt so. I felt so bad for you. But didn't, didn't those flowers I picked for you out in the garden make up for that today? Oh, oh Jean, Jean Brad, Jean, Jean Brad, she gonna try to, Jean, Doctor Brad, she gonna try to blackmail me now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Okay. I'm going to close out the recording, everybody. We're going to start.